For our project, we will be making a landscape. What is a landscape? A landscape is an artwork depicting natural scenery. There are many different types of artists that create many different types of landscapes. For our project, we will be studying artists Hokusai and Ted Harrison. Hokusai was an artist from Japan. He was a printmaker, and he's best known for his series of prints, 36 Views of Mount Fuji. Now, let's take a look at some of his artwork. This artwork on the left is called The Great Wave, and it is one of his series of Mount Fuji prints. The one on the right is another one of his Mount Fuji prints, but at a different angle. Now, let's look at Ted Harrison. Ted Harrison is from Canada. He is a painter and illustrator, and he's best known for his many paintings of Yukon, Canada. Here's some samples of his artwork. I really enjoy his bright colors and interesting designs. Now, both Ted Harrison and Hokusai are landscape artists, and they both use space in their artwork. What is space? Space is one of the seven elements of art, along with line, shape, form, color, value, and texture. Space is the area above, around, or within an object. Many landscape artists show space in their artwork, often creating the illusion of depth. What is the illusion of depth? Artists working in 2D media like drawing, painting, printmaking, etc. give their artworks the illusion of depth or make their artwork look more three-dimensional. There are many different techniques to make your artwork appear more 3D. The ones we will use for our landscape project are size, positioning, and grounds of space. First, size. Size. Objects up close are bigger. Objects far away are smaller. If I'm looking at this artwork by Hokusai, the wave and the boat appear much larger, and the mountain is much smaller. In reality, the wave would probably be a lot smaller than a giant mountain. Same thing with a boat. But in the artwork, he created the wave and the boat to be much larger so they are closer. Next, let's look at positioning. Positioning means that objects up close are near the bottom of the picture plane. They're in that position. Objects far away are near the top in that position. If I'm looking at this Hokusai artwork, the birds are at the bottom of the picture plane so they appear closer and the mountain and the sky are farther away so they are near the top. We even have birds that are flying away. They're not much smaller than the birds in the front, but they appear farther away because they're near the top. Lastly, the grounds of space. There are three grounds of space, foreground, middle ground, and background. Foreground is near the front or forward. Middle ground is in the middle, and the background is in the back. If I'm looking at this artwork by Ted Harrison, the people and the dark blue, almost purple mountains are in the front, in the foreground. The lighter blue mountains and that yellowish path or river is in the middle ground. And in the background, there is the orange mountains and the sky. So that's farthest away, so that's in the background. So now we are going to create our own landscape artwork. And I'm looking for us using the grounds of space, size, and positioning. The art materials you will need is a pencil and a black marker. I'll be using a Sharpie. First, I'm going to draw objects in the foreground or in the front. Like we saw, the position is near the bottom. So I'm just drawing some hills. I'm going to add an object that is larger in size that's in the front a tree, and I'll also add some little details. Nothing too detailed, just simple drawings. Next, I'm gonna draw the middle ground in the middle of my paper, and the size gets a little bit smaller and has less detail. Lastly, I'm gonna do my background, which will be my sky. 
And I'm looking for a sun that is not in the corner. Now I'm going to count all of the shapes in my artwork. I want about 10 to 15 shapes total. So no teeny tiny objects, just big shapes. I have enough. All right, I'm gonna erase my marks where I counted. Now I'm gonna start with my black marker. The first thing I'm gonna do is just trace over my pencil lines. Go very slowly, making sure to stay on your pencil lines. I fell off my lines a couple of times, but I still tried to make my lines purposeful and good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling in my patterns. Now if I have these grass lines right here, those won't work. But instead, I created a zigzag line pattern that imitated that grass look. So I'm gonna fill this shape with that pattern. Since my pattern was really big, I decided to add some smaller little patterns inside. So I'm adding smaller zigzag lines inside of the bigger zigzags. And I'm going to continue that same, adding the smaller zigzags to all of the zigzags in my shapes pattern. Next, I'm moving on to the next shape, and I saw that I drew some flowers. Now, while I can't have any small flowers, I can draw a flower pattern that fills that whole shape. So I'm drawing some small circles for the center of the flower, and then drawing the petals around them. And I'm going to repeat that in this whole shape. had some empty spaces so I decided to add some smaller flowers and some circles to fill in those empty spaces so the shape was fully filled. Alright, on to the next shape. I decided to do almost like a checkerboard pattern, kind of looking like plains or fields where farmers might be growing crops. Like with my zigzags, I had a, some big empty spaces so I decided to fill those with smaller patterns of stripes. In my tree, I wanted to show that fluffy texture that leaves have. So I decided to make some swirly lines and I decided to repeat that pattern in all of my leaf shapes in my tree. Next, onto the middle ground. When I'm drawing a shape, the first thing I'm gonna do is trace my pencil lines then I'm going to start doing my pattern. I decided to do a vertical wavy line pattern and repeated that pattern all over my mountains. And make sure when you're reaching objects that might be in the foreground, you go behind them, not on top of them. I didn't like the empty space in my tree, so I decided to add some lines to my tree to give it a pattern as well. I almost wanted to make a wood texture, so I decided to make some long vertical lines that are kind of curving with the branches. Lastly, for my background, I was going to do my rays and my sun. So first I traced over my shapes and my pencil lines, then I drew my pattern. I just did a line pattern of straight lines going outwards, and then I thought clouds are in the sky, so I decided to draw some small cloud-like shapes and make a pattern of those. I repeated the pattern of clouds and sun rays, clouds, sun rays, to all of my sections. I even added a little bit of pattern to my sun. So continue adding patterns, continue filling in your shapes and going over your pencil 
until your Zen Tangle landscape is complete. And there you go. You've made a Zen Tangle landscape.